What is going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about mid-season cucumber care. So we're gonna be going over some pruning, trellising, and some other things that you should be doing with your cucumber plants right now, as well as a couple different stages of growth to show you exactly what you should be doing all the way up to harvest. Let's go. So before we get into the actual care and maintenance portion of this video, I first wanted to show you guys what a cucumber plant looks like when it first sprouts out of the ground and kind of at what point in its growth or life cycle you should start worrying about pruning. Now you can see here we have a cucumber plant. Now this plant is roughly three weeks old. So after you put a seed in the ground, about three weeks later, your plant should be somewhere around this size. Now I decided to film these plants right here because this is actually an important stage and when you should start thinking about pruning your plants. So you can see right here we have the main stem, we have the leaves, and in between each main leaf or sun leaf is what I like to call them and the main stem are side shoots that are going to start coming out of every single crevice in between that leaf and main stem. Now if you let these grow, these are going to become new main stems and at this size we do not want that to happen. So really all we're going to do here at this point is when you start seeing these, remove them from the plant. They come off really easy at this size and what this is going to do is take the energy that would be going into these developing side shoots and putting all of that energy back into the main stem meaning that your plants are going to become taller and eventually will set more flowers and more fruit. Now let's fast forward a couple weeks and let me show you guys what some plants look like if you do not prune those side shoots off. At about four to five weeks old, your plants are going to get pretty tall. They're gonna start vining out like crazy. They're gonna start putting out their flowers and even some of their fruit, as well as those side shoots that we talked about earlier in this video. So let's show you up close what some of those things look like and what you can be doing to maintaining these plants at this size. So here's a cucumber plant that I did not prune for the purpose of this video. And as you can see, it is a mess. Um, there's flowers, there's fruit, there's tons of leaves, tons of side shoots, just a whole bunch going on here. But you can see down here is the main stem. So the main stem is right there. It goes up, but off of it, there's tons of side shoots coming out everywhere tons of leaves, tons of flowers. We even have some fruit developing down there at the base of the stem. But I'm gonna show you guys how to clean this plant up and get it back on the right track. All right, so we got the main stem right here and I didn't realize, but at the base, I've actually pruned some of those side shoots. Um, but you can see there are some new ones coming in in replace of the old side shoots. Cucumber plants are insane. They grow like crazy. They do not stop growing and they will do whatever they can to put out more leaves, put out more fruit. So all we're gonna be doing here is we have some flowers coming in at the bottom, removing those, removing any leaves at the base of the plant. I would recommend getting some type of um, cutters that you can remove these leaves um, and remove some of the other debris so that you're not just tearing them right off the plant. But all we're gonna do here is just remove these leaves, remove any flowers at the base of the plant. You don't want these leaves touching the ground. Um, a lot of times they can be the first to get those diseases because they're in more of the shade. They're not really doing anything for the plant. They're not really in taking any of the sunlight like the top leaves are. So really all these are doing is just sitting at the bottom. Um, dirt when it rains splashes on top of these leaves and they're often the first to carry either pests or diseases that eventually transfer to the rest of your plant. So we're just removing anything that is touching the bottom, any new growth coming in like that, just cleaning it up a bit. That way there's no chance that these leaves are going to get infested with anything that could possibly harm or kill the plant. Now, as you can see, a lot cleaner already. And then just throw the scraps in the compost pile. Now, as we move higher up the plant is when it gets a little more chaotic. You can see we've got a big side shoot right there, side shoot right there. 
And like we talked about, these are just going to keep growing at the same length that your main center stem is. And they're just going to get super chaotic. This plant is going to get super bushy. Um, they're going to put out so much foliage. And it's just going to create a massive amount of plant matter, meaning that it's going to cast a lot of shade. It's going to hold in a lot of moisture on these leaves. It's the perfect environment for pests and diseases to come and attack these plants. So cleaning these plants up by just, like we talked about, removing any of these at the bottom as we can. Now, as we get more to the top of the plant is when you can start letting these plants vine out a little more. Again, it's not at the top of the plant that we need to worry about. It's at the bottom where it's closest to the soil. It's going to cast the most shade down here. And it's just something that I have always done and seems to work out the best. You may think that removing all of this plant material, all of these flowers and developing fruit is bad. It's going to give you less of a harvest. But really, all it's doing is, again, just putting that energy back into that center main stem, which eventually is going to bush out at the top, and you're going to get so much more of a harvest. I'm telling you right now, I get so much more of a harvest doing this, and your plants are going to last so much longer. And if you do get the occasional pest or disease, you're able to spot it more easily and remove it right then and there. And now you can see how much better this cucumber plant already looks. One thing I would recommend allowing to stay on the plant are the tendrils, which are just these green vines basically that are going to help it um, attach itself to whatever trellis you're growing it up so that it doesn't fall over, it stays upright and it keeps growing upright. Um, it's going to keep the plant stronger and healthier. Now at about a foot off the ground, you can start allowing your flowers and fruit to develop on the vine. You really don't want them to develop at the bottom of the vine or in the bottom foot that we cut off because I've noticed a lot of times those don't really get as big. They're often really small fruits that just take energy away from the plants. And if you allow fruit to mature on the vine too early, it's going to take all of that energy away from the plant and you may only get a couple fruits before this plant just cannot do any more. So allowing your plant to get nice and tall, lots of leaves, um, very mature before you allow those fruits to develop on the plant is often way better for the plant and it's going to allow your plants to set so much fruit later on. So again, after about the foot, you can allow these leaves to stay. Um, you can allow any flowers or fruit to start developing. You can see right here, we actually have a fruit developing or a cucumber developing on the vine. I'm gonna let that keep growing because at this point, by the time that fruit develops on this plant, this plant is already going to probably be another foot taller, which at that point, the plant is easily able to produce those full-size cucumbers that you want. At this point, when your plants are about two to three feet tall, I'd say, I would allow you know, two or three more of those side shoots to develop and become main stems with this one center stalk or main center stem and allow those three to four stems to branch off and just go crazy. Allow those plants to become your fruiting um, vines, allow those to bush off, branch, how, whatever they wanna do, set all of those flowers and fruits that you want. And because at this point, the plant is going to be well-established and it's going to be able to maintain more growth. Now, one thing I would recommend as you allow these side shoots to start branching out more as the plant gets taller is every once in a while, just going through and seeing which leaves are actually receiving sunlight. You don't want leaves on this plant that are just sitting here, you maybe face down or covered by the top canopy of the rest of the plant, because really at that point, these leaves aren't doing anything. Again, they're going to hold that moisture they're going to carry that disease um, and whatever else may occur in your area. So these are called sun leaves for a reason. They are taking the sun's energy or the sun's light and converting it to energy to feed the plant. And if they're not doing that, they're really just gonna sit on the plant. Um, the plant's going to basically cut off this leaf material. Eventually, these leaves are going to die that aren't receiving sunlight and they're just going to fall off, again, carry that disease or whatever else may be present. So really no reason to leave leaves that are not receiving sunlight on the plant. So now we have a plant here that is well pruned all the way up to about a foot and a half and then we're leaving leaves on the plants because again, you want those leaves to convert the sun's light to energy. 
And again, we're still removing any suckers that might be on the plant until about two to three feet tall. And then we're going to allow three to four more of those suckers to branch out and start producing our fruit. And again, you can allow those to just go crazy. As they get taller, they're going to kind of create this big canopy at the top and they're going to start setting a lot of their fruit. Now, as you can see, I am running it up a trellis and I wanna talk a little bit more about that. A big question in the gardening world is whether you should grow cucumbers up a trellis or sprawled all around the ground. And really, either way works perfectly fine. But in my personal opinion, I have always grown cucumbers up a trellis. A lot of times if you grow them and just allow them to sprawl all around the ground, they're going to, again, have a much higher chance of pests and diseases because pests are more easily able to hide among the mass amount of leaves. You're not able to prune as much. Those tendrils are going to attach to the weeds and wood chips and whatever else that you have around, meaning that it's so much harder to prune your plants. And you're not gonna be able to find fruit as easily when it's covered among the ground. The fruit's going to look the same as the leaves. And cucumbers grow so insanely fast. I mean, you can get full mature cucumbers in as little as three days. So when they're producing at their highest amount, it's super hard to find those cucumbers until it's too late, until they become overripe. And at that point, the plant tells itself that the fruit has matured, the seeds inside of those mature fruits have become viable, and the plant starts to shut down. It starts to stop growing because it basically tells itself that it's done for the season. It's put all of its energy into those fruits. So you really wanna make sure that you're harvesting all of your fruit at an eatable size or an edible size um, and you do not want those to become overripe because if, again, if they become overripe, then you might run into some problems. Your plants are going to start shutting down and you just don't want that. But perhaps the biggest problem of allowing your cucumber plants to grow along the ground instead of up a trellis are diseases. Cucumber plants are very prone to diseases like powdery mildew, early blight, and some of these other things that can attack your plants and kill them off very quickly if you don't see them in time and when they're growing along the ground just like not being able to see those fruits you're not going to be able to see in between all of that massive amount of leaves in those vines and a lot of times you're going to miss one or two leaves that contain those diseases and then at that point they just continue to spread and eventually it just becomes too hard to stop it so I recommend growing up a trellis it has worked wonders for me in both fruit production and health of the plant, allowing the plants to grow later on into the season. And basically all I do is I just get some wire or some yarn or some type of thing that is going to hold the plants up. And once they start vining out at about a foot tall, I add from this T post, I do two, two T posts, one there and I do one down there. And I just run that wire along the two T posts, allowing those plants to first attach themselves, allow their tendrils to attach themselves to that string and then as the plants get taller adding another layer of that and keep doing that as the plants grow so i really hope that you guys are able to integrate some of the things that i talked about in today's video into your gardens into your cucumber plants and hopefully answer any questions that you may have had so if you enjoyed today's video and learned something new please give it a like and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future content coming soon and check out our seed shop as well. We've got tons of awesome varieties that you can check out and grow in your garden. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.